Hello and welcome. I'm so excited. I got the download that today we're not talking about smudge. We're going to do that next week. Today we're talking about animal totems because it's my birthday. And once you dabble, get your fingers in the earth astrology, it's called, um, Sun Bear called his book. Oh, what am I doing? It's right here. It's in my book. I quoted him with permission. So this comes from Sun Bear's uh, book, The Medicine Wheel Earth Astrology. And I really related to this. And then when you relate it to other people, like the sun signs are good, but rather limited. So what I found with this is it puts the two together and you can draw some analogies together. You can have some really great fun with this. Now, I did ask if anybody knew, what do you think my sign is? Well, my animal totem is the snake. So that's the time right now for Scorpios. So I'm going to address that first today. And as a Scorpio and as a snake, so there are some similarities. And with everything and all of these teachings, there's a dark side and there's a light side. So there's dark arrows and light arrows. And what we're looking for is the rainbow arrows. They're the ones that speak to our heart and to our soul. So that's what we're pulling together. You notice we've got, we've talked about the chakras. This all ties together. All these little pieces. It's like a piece of braided sweet grass. It's some of everything in it in there and one blade of grass doesn't have strength but when you weave all of those braids all those pieces of grass together all of that wisdom and knowledge from different sources now you have enduring strength and deep knowledge oh I must admit I wore this scarf because it reminds me of animal patterns you know leopard spots and snake skins and all kinds of good stuff if you can keep that in mind on once you know what your animal totem is. So let me tell you a little bit about the snake. You know, a lot of people are afraid of snakes because they're unpredictable. They don't know which way they're going to move. And some people love snakes. They don't have a fear of them. But most of the people, when you say snake, they go, oh, I don't like snakes. So it's, and I found that in my life is either people love me or they don't love me at all. And I'm okay with that. There's not everybody, I don't love everybody either, so perfectly fine. So the snake also sheds its skin often. And whether it, sometimes it needs to shed its skin all by itself, just squeezing between the rocks. And it could be really painful to remove that skin so that you're born anew. And other times, it comes off very easy. Just a little walk through the grass and you, I feel so much better now. I feel so much lighter now. Snakes like to be alone. They also like to get into the tangle and all the rubby, rubby good stuff. So that's snakes. Now let's go across the wheel where we're talking about six months from now. That is the Taurus sign. So the Taurus is a beaver and that beaver likes to stay in his own pond. You know, when you think about a beaver, a beaver likes to have their family around. They have their pond, they build the dams up. They're very responsible people who are very um, family orient oriented. They may talk about going to the pond next door, but they just like to have everybody in their own pond. Those are the two that I'm most familiar with. So keep that in mind. You want to keep in mind, not just the animal totem, but what does it eat? Where does it live? So the more you know about that, the more you could relate how many similarities are there with me? I loved being in the desert in Arizona. I was also in the tiniest desert in uh, Canada's Arctic, on the way from uh, the Northwest Territories to Alaska. You go through a little tiny desert up there. 
And I just really like that. So as a snake, maybe that's why. So explore that. The other thing about snakes is they do eat their prey whole. So I sometimes swallow a lot and it takes me a while to digest what I've taken in. And then it takes me a while to be able to share that to what's gone on inside of me. So let's walk through each of the animal signs. So I've got it here on my screen. So if the next sign is going to be Sagittarius. So if you're a Sagittarius, then that's the elk. And the elk is a herd animal. But you also have those images of the great majestic elk at the top of the mountain, just so strong and so powerful. So can you relate to that? The next one, and I can read the comments. Somehow this has worked out that I can read the comments today. The next one is December 22nd to January 19th, and that's the Capricorn, and that's the Snow Goose. And right now, at this time of year, we have had a huge flock of snow geese come by this area. Like I'm talking 100,000 snow geese. And the vision is so beautiful. They look more like a Muscovy duck than a Canada goose. They're white, some gray, but when they fly in the sun, it just looks like a thousand stars, a million stars. So that's the snow goose. The snow goose migrates, goes to the north, then goes to the south. You need to think about these animals and what their behavior is and what is your behavior. And then the Aquarius, the most playful animal totem of all from January 20th to February 18th. That's the otter. And the otter loves to play. If you've got someone around you that's always pulling jokes on you, that's always wants to do something that's fun, it's usually the otter. The otter likes to have fun and dance and play and be with people. Even the introverts, they still like, they have that mischievousness about them, the otters. The next one is Pisces, and that's the cougar. February 19th to March 20th is the cougar. So the cougar is very protective, very, it's from the cat family, so you know they're independent, you know they're strong, and women cougars have a quality that I've read about that says, I'm the only female cougar in this space. This is mine. So there could be very, very territorial and dominant in their area. Then March 21st to April 19th, the Aries, that's the Red Hawk. I was on my very first hot air balloon with this beautiful woman who had done a lot of things in her life. And for her, one thing left on her bucket list was to be in a hot air balloon. And for her 80th birthday, we pulled our money together and we bought her a flight on a hot air balloon. There was space left in the balloon, so I bought a space to go with her. Her animal totem was the red hawk. And she had didn't realize that that was her birth totem, but she had always related to it. Well, you know the rest of the story. The balloon went up, we're flying over the fields, and who comes eye to eye with her but the Red Hawk? Looked right at her. It was incredible experience. We all just had a collective breath on it. So you need to keep an eye out for those symbols. Uh, I mentioned the Taurus. That's the beaver. And that's from April 20th to May 20th. And then the next one, May 21st to June 20th, is the Gemini. And that's the twins. So the animal totem for that is the deer. And the twins is a good symbol for that. One goes one way, one goes the other way. Well, if you watch deer scatter, you just they just explode in all directions. Or they stand there sort of deer in the headlights. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They're also very um, pack animals. They like to be in herds together. They find a spot, they like to have the security. Again, very family oriented. You know, most animals are. They don't just hatch their youngs and leave them. 
um, who's next? Next is the cancer. And that's the flicker. The flicker is a bird. If you don't know, it's mostly a ground feeder. It's related with the woodpecker and it has beautiful coloring on it. It has red and yellow and black and a beautiful head that's um, a taupey gray brown color that's really quite stunning. The next one is the Leo and that's a sturgeon. Had this conversation with someone yesterday. One of her daughters is a sturgeon. Sturgeon is a huge fish. There's even stories that maybe the Loch Ness Monster is really a giant sturgeon. They live at the bottom of the lake. They're not easily caught and they're not easily fooled. Quiet in the deep, deep people, deep at the depth of the water. The Virgo is from August 23rd to September 22nd and that's the brown bear. So if you're a brown bear, you may find yourself wanting to hibernate in the winter. Just get quiet, gather, just, you know, settle down. That's not your period of high activity during the winter months. The next one is the Libra, the raven. I have four raven granddaughters. And the cool thing about ravens is every one of them is totally different. Every one of them, although they have some similarities, they're different from each other, and yet they love to be together. And I'll tell you, when those four are together, it is like a flock of ravens because it's some loud and it is some fun. So when you hear the ravens calling each other, just think of that. Think it's talking to each other. They're saying, hello, good morning. They may be a little loud sometimes, but they're having fun and they connect you to that beautiful space of just being full of joy. The next one, Scorpio. I think I covered the snake adequately and we talked about Sagittarius, the elk. So that's it. I've posted it in the notes. So you're going to have the list yourself. And I highly recommend, there's a little bit about it in my book because it's about the zesters. It's under the list of zesters. Live your zest is the last part in the book. But I highly recommend this book, Animal Speak by uh, Ted Andrews. And you can see mine is like a mess. It's marked up. It's got all kinds of things. If you want to know more about your totem, use that as a reference, but use your intuition. Connect to yourself. How do you relate to your animal totem? And when you need that strength to shed a skin or to go do whatever you need to do to fly a little higher, cut on your animal totem. Your birth totem is there to help you and for you to help it go wherever you need to go. That's what I'm looking for you to do today. Practice that. Think about your animal totem. Think about the people that you live with. Do they want to just stay in the pond? Are they more homebodies? You can understand them more when you know what their animal totems is. You can open your heart and have more grace for them. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow we're talking about karma and dharma. What's the difference? The misconceptions, my own interpretation of it. Now we talk about how it relates to your book of life. We're going to talk a little bit about the Akashic Records, which is your book of life. And we'll take a look at that tomorrow. I thank you so much for being here with me today to celebrate this Scorpio Snake's birthday with me. Thank you. Love you. See you tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern.